Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. I've made up my mind. To go God's way for the rest of my life I've made up my mind You know, many people believe that preachers are unintelligent people And when it has to do with salvation alone That they have something to say When it has to do with the matters that help people to excel And live a victorious Christian life While serving the purposes of the kingdom With dignity and honor most people believe the house of God is not the go-to place. It's a wrong narrative. And I hope that by these meetings, God is using it to... He's changing our minds. The church is not a nuisance to civilization. Please understand this. Not every man of God is moving around trying to look for money and manipulate people. There are people who fear God sincerely and intend to be contributors to nation building. Are you learning? Thank you. Thank you. Now listen, pay attention. Favor. One person, write this down please. One person can be used by God to open a hundred doors of opportunity for you. One man can be used by God. Remember God has to be in the equation. One man can be used by God to open more than a hundred doors of opportunity for you. This is very, very important. When, when I realized, respectfully speaking, that I didn't have all the advantage that would be needed to serve the purposes of the kingdom effectively, it does not take money to have an encounter with Jesus Christ. It doesn't take resources. It doesn't take access. It doesn't even take influence. It just takes passion and hunger. Let me tell you where the challenge of many believers come from. The average believer usually gets born again, say, on campus or maybe while schooling. Is that true? And as a student, most times the emphasis is just on your spiritual growth and your academics. You can't be talking to a student about, you know, accessing some of these things. There may be distractions at that level. So the only message is messages that relate to pressing into God, depths in the spirit, you know, prayer and fasting, consecration, love for God and all of these things. But sooner or later, that person now becomes a family person. There are real responsibilities that are now added. Is that true? You will have to redesign your teachings as an effective man of God to do well to help the people remain spiritually in touch, passionately in love with God, but at the same time, you must now supply them the keys that help them to excel in their career, in their life, while serving the purposes of the kingdom. Otherwise, sooner or later, they will be distracted by the need to make a living and they will leave the things of God. It will cancel out all your investment of many years. I can tell you one of the reasons why many believers are not serious with God is because they have not engaged these systems of advantage to help them be victorious. The Bible says, he that oh, you have asked for nothing, it says to ask that you should receive to the end that your joy may be full. Is someone following tonight? Many sincere people in this country, many sincere people around Africa, many sincere people in this city, and probably many sincere people seated and listening to me, desire to live for Jesus, desire to love him with all their hearts, desire to serve the purposes of the kingdom in truth. But that may not be possible until you access these systems of advantage when they walk in your life they now afford you the time listen ladies and gentlemen it takes time to seek god 
It takes time to teach your children the things of God. It takes time. There is so much destruction in our world today. You can't lock yourself for two, three days to say, I'm seeking the face of God because there are bills. Society will call you irresponsible even though you call yourself a passionate believer. I know many people who started well in ministry. Many sincere people who loved God with all their hearts. Some of them today are not in ministry because the needs and the cares of life just strangled away their passion for God. Respectfully speaking, some of us, you go and meet our parents at home and in the villages and you talk to them about loving God and having passion for God and they look at you and pity you so much. They say, listen, let me tell you, I was the protocol to T.L. Osborne when he came into Nigeria. So all these things you are doing, we did it before. Why should someone become that frustrated? Do you know there are believers today who are angry at God because it looks like he's calmed them? He gave them a proposal that they will have a victorious life. They left idol worship and left everything and came to him. And the only thing they caught was spiritual fire. Not accessing the systems of advantage in the kingdom will make God appear like a wicked and cruel and self-centered God. You see, the way preachers teach about God, if, not, if you do not understand who God is, your conclusion will be that God must be a wicked and a cruel king. Here's the proposition. Leave everything and love God. Doesn't matter what happens to you. Don't worry about it. You just focus on this God. He, he gave his life to you. Give your own to him in return. Sacrifice everything and love him. What about my children? Just forget about them. He will take control. You just keep praying and make sure you love the Lord. Now your children are saying, Daddy, this God you are talking about, is it that he does not see that we have needs? They don't worry. The most important thing is, I love Jesus with all my heart. Until children become teenagers, teenagers become angry youth who help to kill you. You come to them, they say, look, I was a pastor's child. Don't you dare talk to me about this thing about God. Our world today has several options. They've, if we do not teach these things in its entirety, let me tell you, we are going to lose a whole generation. I assure you. I need, I need to put things in perspective so you don't think we are just carnally talking about success and victory. There is nothing we are discussing that is in isolation to kingdom come. We are a people of vision. People who passionately love God. So everything we are communicating is part, is a subset put together to make the believer become victorious. You ignore what I am teaching you sooner or later. Sooner or later. You may regret it. I bow my knees to the Lord in gratitude today that when the Holy Spirit brought this dimension, in addition to my passion for Jesus, my loving him, which remains my priority in life and in death, that I did not ignore this other aspect. I probably today would have also been an unfortunate preacher, manipulating people. You think if I'm hungry and my needs are not met and hunger is pressing me indefinitely, and I have the prophetic and you are here? Oh, come on. <laughs> sit down, sit down. I am, I am by no means trying to insult the body of Christ, no. I am saying the systems of advantage are some of the sponsors of integrity. Please hear me. As a man of God, you do not know this and you do not learn this. You don't learn these principles you will be surprised at the things you will eventually do you may never believe that one day you can manipulate a rich man or manipulate someone oh i fear god with all my heart the day your wife gets on her knees and her children and say look i'm tired of this your thing the devil will come to you again i came to you 10 years ago you say i fear god now i've come to you in light of your needs I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. forever 
regardless your background listen to me regardless the disadvantages that surround your life i introduce to you tonight a system of advantage there is a grace called favor it can come upon an individual it came upon an a, a villager called esther and took her from the village to the palace favor the lifting power of favor not even jesus disregarded it when he walked upon the earth and jesus grew in wisdom in stature in favor i've had the honor and the privilege of searching the life of our fathers of faith men who have run this race and gone before us and have found out that in all they are getting they did not ignore favor Can I share with you a few keys as we pray? Because we are going to pray. Hmm. There are about four or five keys that I want to give you tonight that control and activate this grace called favor. And it is my prayer in the name of Jesus for you who are here and all who are following that in the name of Jesus you obtain grace to walk in keeping with these principles this is the good understanding that brings favor I assure you many of you you see let me tell you within a short time you will be surprised to see the beauty and the glory that comes out of your life and you see the surprising thing is that your prayer life will not go down no you are learning God's way the surprising thing is that your passion for God will even be ever increasing are we together key number one the first key that activates this grace this mysterious grace called favor in the life of individuals the life of businesses companies politicians businessmen ministers of the gospel churches it doesn't matter who it's a principle that works for any everybody are you ready key number one honor the first key that controls favor is honor please write it down honor is the key to access Anytime a door closes before you and refuses to open, I can tell you the name of the padlock that was used to lock that door is called dishonor. Let's define honor very quickly. What is honor? Honor is the discerning. Please write it down. Honor is the discerning. Comma. Honor is the celebrating. And honor is the rewarding of men for their distinctive difference. The discerning, the rewarding or the celebrating, and the rewarding of men for their distinctive difference, their uniqueness, is called honor. So real honor starts with discernment. All men are equal in Christ. The same Lord is rich unto us. But as far as the discipline of purpose, the sacrifice of destiny is concerned, all men are not the same. You must have the fortitude to recognize and to discern the difference. In the example I gave you earlier on, what, what, what do you think is the difference between the senior advocate and the young man who was about to start his law practice, I will tell you the difference. The difference is years of investing to build credibility. The difference is years and pain, years of mistake. And the price that that senior advocate had to pay to learn. When you honor men, listen to me, it's not human worship. There is human worship which is wrong. But I can tell you this, great men are not great by mistake. They are testaments of endurance. We live in a world that has mastered the art of trivializing people. You see a wealthy man, you begin to curse him and say, wicked Nigerians, all of you just destroying our money. Yet that man was born and he slept under a bridge one day. 
You see a man of God who is anointed and blessed and God is showing him mercy. And you may say, I don't mind all these people. God just gave them grace and they are acting as if. Listen, Africa, we must learn this. Nigeria, we must learn this. The church, we must learn this. We are equal in Christ. But the men and women you see who are the gatekeepers today, many of these men, if they tell you their stories, you will end up in tears. Testaments of endurance. I was returning back from Lagos and um, the pilot that flew us to return, um, when they were introducing the man, they said this is an award-winning so, 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 and so, and so, one of the best and the finest in the industry. And when they said that we were happy, when we lifted all through the flight and when we landed, even me, I clapped. I said, that man, truly, he deserves every accolade. You can see the difference. You can see the intelligence and the professionalism. Now, for someone, you say, oh, well, pilots are pilots. Until the other version of this excellence flies you. <laughs> are we together now? Yes, sir. God's grace, absolutely phenomenal people. Custodians of wisdom. People who you enter their office and you see awards from one end to the other as if they are selling it. And every single one was earned. And yet they sit down very humbly. Now a wise person will quickly drop any man of God thing and say, Sir, what can you teach me within these five minutes? These awards are not a showcase. Let me tell you what most Nigerians will do. Is it just because you are lucky? What is award? Let me tell you what an award is. Award is a testament that you have paid the price and your world, even though selfish, they've been compelled to recognize it. Are we learning? Don't be offended. I'm a bit harsh. I'm pushing you for a reason. Honor. The discerning. The celebrating. And the rewarding of men for their distinctive difference. You hear me say this is a house of honor. It is for a reason. Seated here, the overflows and following online are thousands and eventually will evolve to millions of people. Some of these people are absolutely phenomenal people. Some of the people you may be sitting close to today, by the protocol of their profession, you may not even have the access to sit close to them. Is that true? Many preachers have closed the door of favor because of dishonor. In as much as you are anointed, remember you are captain only within your jurisdiction. Are we learning? Everybody say honor. Honor, honor is one of the mysteries that when you engage it will bring you favor almost immediately. You keep insulting your boss. This man is a stupid man. As stupid as you think he is, he, every year he's turning over in billions and he's paying your salary without fail. Yet you call him stupid. Every one of us under the sound of my voice, I pray that God will grant you grace to have a renewed orientation today. You can literally earn a living practicing honor. That when people say, what are you doing? You say, I'm in real estate. What are you doing? I work with oil, an oil and gas firm. What are you doing? I practice honor. It's only a fool who will laugh at you. You can literally earn a living practicing honor. Honor is a stream of income. A stream of income that does not need capital to start. And yet it is marvelously fail-proof. Are we blessed? Oh no. You must discern. Never enter the presence of greatness and act as if you are not aware of it. No. No. As much as God continues to lift me when I step into the presence of great people, I'm not talking of human worship. No. That is wrong. But to give people an impression that, look, I am aware of your sacrifices. I am aware of all of these great things. 
one of the clearest expressions of honor is gratitude ingratitude is a display of dishonor someone pays your school fees takes care of you sends a million naira to you and after two days you reply with a one word text thanks hmm. he pays another one thanks and it never comes again let me tell you it was not a spirit spirits take advantage of our disobedience and ride upon it to help us lock those doors i'm saying this to you because there are many of you today who have uncles and have people who in a heartbeat can open doors but you are surprised why they will not attend to you and you keep hearing that they are lifting orders it is dishonor that has closed that door you keep having dreams and visions of yourself moving forward and excelling in life yet it never manifests because the conduit the human conduit who should partner with god for your lifting you have dishonored and closed that door let me challenge you here tomorrow is monday work continues why don't you take it as a challenge and find something maybe a bottle of wine or something go and meet your boss if you have access to him and just just greet him and just tell him look um i just came to say thank you sir thank you so much it's been five years working with you or working with this company and i have experienced phenomenal growth i have learned i have grown and this is just me coming i went to church and i was taught the value of honor and i want to be a practitioner of the word i just want to say thank you let me tell you what your boss will do all right all right leave leave usually but there is no man who has vaccination against honor nobody there is nobody on earth who can resist honor people will express it in different ways the person looks at you and on that table he's deciding the next set of executives there was one more gap left and he just sought his next executive your certificate will give you a job but honor will guide your promotion there is a realm you get to where everybody has the same qualification with you the distinguishing factor becomes the practice of these mysteries that's what gives you an edge are we together please say honor practice honor practice honor the cheapest way to practice honor is thanksgiving discern and say thank you there are many men who never tell their wives thank you i don't mean to offend you but it's true thank you for what i paid her dowry there are many women who never tell their husbands thank you what for the bible says mm -mm, mm -mm. there are many children who never tell their parents thank you i didn't ask them to give birth to me see all those kinds of thinkings thank you learn it please don't just laugh learn it don't say thanks no it's a mediocre way of expressing honor don't send people a text and say there are many people who have done well just to let you know you are one of them no when it has to do with communication of honor you give people a sense of exclusivity you are that valuable to me honor is the discerning the celebrating and the rewarding there are people for instance who have shown me honor in my life and by the honor they have shown subconsciously i have become indebted to them i'm not saying do it but i'm just telling you there are people who went that far look at nicodemus you now know that even though they were not born again they were wise people he came to jesus by night he didn't say sit down i am a pharisee let's talk he said rabbi he never called him jesus rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god forget everything we said in the afternoon we know it's just our job that makes us do that we know that thou art a man sent from god then he now says no man can do these things except God be with him. 
And Jesus said, you won my heart. Let's talk. Verily, verily, I say unto you. He didn't even ask Jesus a question. Jesus started talking. Read your Bible. He had not asked a question yet. You're Jesus. Verily, verily, I say unto you. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Then he now said, can a man enter? He expressed so much ignorance. And he said, look, Jesus, this, this is intelligence. And Jesus said, let me now explain. Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he shall not enter the kingdom of God. And then the wind blew it where it listed. Jesus began another lecture. Same thing with the woman at the well. Have you noticed that honor is magnetic? It keeps people within your vicinity. It keeps helpers within your vicinity. It's the job of the Holy Ghost to send them to you. It's your job to work in partnership with him to maintain them. Never step into the door of greatness and allow that door shut you out. No. Honor is what keeps the door open so that your children and your children's children can pass through. There are people today when they endorse you, even if you have an enemy who does not like you, they are compelled to bless you because of the power of their sacrifice invested in their signature. We have to hurry up. Are you learning? The celebrating, the rewarding of difference. Turn to the person seated by your left and right and tell them, I honor you, God bless you. Feel embarrassed, but still do it. Just say it. Look at me. Let me challenge, let me challenge, let me challenge the young people in our nation and tell you why many people don't have doors. They come to you, usually once you are blessed, you have this plethora of relatives who are waiting, angrily entitled, believing that you owe them. And then people just come in, uncle, how are you? And they just bounce around and they are seeing people queuing. Your uncle is their CEO and they are respecting the person. And you just bounce in and come in, how are you? And um, uncle, anything for the boys. And he looks at you and just manages it, gives you something and tells his PA, any day you see this boy coming, make sure you don't open the door again why because you communicated dishonor <clears throat> i shared with you okay i'm not sure i've shared it here in abuja a very true story i went for a conference years ago and a man of god shared that story let me use it to wrap up this subject of honor so we'll move to the next point true story this man was seated he was a pastor of a church and God was using him mightily, true story. But back at home, things were not working well, especially financially. Things were a bit rough. And yet he would sit down and the wife would sit down and they would hear testimonies of marvelous things that God was doing. Changing the lives of people and people would clap. But that man sat down there and there was fire on the mountain in his own house. One time during a service like this, the wife just got up and walked out of the meeting. The man was done, finished his counseling, and ran back home. My wife, what happened? Did I offend you? Did I say something during the message? She didn't say anything. And then he sat at table to eat, and he noticed that the plates that she was using to serve him, you know those, women have those holy of holies <laughs> plates that only come out when there's a triumphant entry. So <laughs> that... <laughs> <laughs> praise the lord now watch this she brought those plates and served him and he kept asking what happened did i offend you we can talk about this she didn't say anything finally when she brought the last item kept it on the table she got down on her knees and she said servant of god my home is in trouble Suddenly the man said the same anointing he used to feel in the church came upon him on that dining table and he laid hands not now not on the wife that grace do you know because every time he was at home he was a husband 
So the anointing for priesthood did not find expression to bring breakthrough. The woman was now wise and saying, you are my husband, but you are also a man of God. Today is not my husband I'm feeding. I'm tired of feeding my husband and receiving compassion. I need results. So let me, let me honor that guy. Let me tell you this. Listen, everybody you see is multidimensional. The dimension you honor is the dimension that delivers to you. Your father can be a prophet and he can be blessing the nations and never see anything for your life. Your CEO can have a powerful signature that has decided the prosperity of institutions and yet you can be seated there and no door opens. He that receives a prophet in the name as touching the office of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. There are many men of God who don't even waste their time praying for certain people because they know by the spirit that they are not going to receive anything. The courage of pride that they bring. I'm not talking about kneeling down. You can kneel down and still be standing up in your heart. So I'm not talking of all those things. No. A settled recognition. Practice this and watch doors open for you. Practice honor. Go back. Some of you this night, even though your parents may look aged, they may not have money, but they have grace. Mama, just to say thank you. Thank you for the honor and the privilege. Every time something is about to happen to me, you see it in your dream. I don't trivialize that grace. And they'll just say, my daughter, the God who helped me in my youth help you carelessly, and that will be it. Doors will begin to open for you at a frequency you may not explain. I am a benefactor of this. I know what I'm saying. Many of you have heard my story. Years ago, when we went to preach, I went to preach in Ekiti State. And we flew through Ilorin and then went by road to Ekiti State. And strangely, I started seeing the obituaries of people and I saw that these people were in their hundreds, 120 something. I said, what is this? We got to a small community and I saw 132 years old, someone who had just died, 132. And yet abroad, they are busy saying 118 is the oldest man. They should come to Nigeria. When I saw that, I knew that this is no longer luck. There must be a grace within this territory. I returned from the ministration and whilst we're passing there, I stopped at that community. Please pay attention. And the people could not, there was nobody who was speaking English there. They were speaking Yoruba. And I said, please, they should lead us to the oldest man within that place that I just want to honor him and just have him pray for us. So finally, we got someone who could speak limited English. And they took us to one of the, I think he's a man of God, one of the elders. And when I went there, I stood with my dear people and I was talking and then they would interpret. Oh, we are men of God. We just came to respect you and honor you just so that you can pray for us. The man laughed. He said, kneel down. He didn't say, you are a man of God. You are an apostle. Kneel down. I got down on my knees with joy and with speed. When that man began to pray, he was praying in Yoruba. True story. I felt like a crown was just put on my head whilst he was praying. When he was done, brought out a seed, gave him. And then when we were going to return to the car to continue the journey, um, I now went to thank some of the women who were gathered that I was greeting. Did you know that I, I, I greeted initially to lead me to that man? When I went there, they now told me that this 132-year-old man who died, that the woman standing there was his wife. Ah, I said, let's go back. The Bible says two shall become one. Even, so the, the man is dead, but he's still alive in her. She, she was like 100 and something, oh, standing like that. No stick, no nothing. Ah, what sort of a grace is this? And I said, please, they should tell her that she has to pray for me before I go. Do you know what happened? The woman tapped me and said, follow me. We entered a room. I didn't care where I was going. I, I said, 
when we entered the room listen she started showing me pictures that was the wife of his youth it was not keturah in old age the wife of his youth and you know people those days they could marry 17 18 the wife of his youth she showed me the picture until maybe about a year or two before he died and then i said please they should tell her i don't know whether i'll call her my grandmother now great grandmother i said please pray when I said so, she said, kneel down. She removed both of her shoes and stepped her feet. I'm showing you the power of honor. She stepped her feet, her bare feet on the ground and began to pray and prophesy and prophesy and prophesy for over 15 minutes. When she was done, I honored her. I entered the car smiling. I ran straight to Zaria and I told my people, I said, stand up, oh, I've come with some things. <laughs> Please sit down. He says, such as I have. Yes, sir. You can know you have a grace. Oh, no. There are people today who got lands that they never had to pay for. They honored their way into ownership. There are house helps today who have been given inheritance worth millions and billions because the children were too irresponsible to be trusted with that kind of thing. Oh no. Whilst you're seated in one minute, please just lay your hand on your head and declare, Lord, the capacity for honor I receive. I run away from this honor outside, inside, following online, Azaria family. Please pray. I obtain grace. It's time for my life to change. Please pray. Oh, my lifting has come. Oh, my lifting has come oh, oh, oh my rising has come oh, oh, oh my rising has come oh, oh, oh my lifting has come oh, 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 oh my lifting has come are you declaring honor father every door that has been closed over my life through this honor may your mercy speak political doors close through this honor ministerial relationships close through this honor access to resources access to the credibility of the great this grace called favor hallelujah praise the lord please sit down let's continue very quickly is god helping someone number two the second key that activates this grace of favor is called value the second key that activates favor in an unquestionable dimension is value what is value value is a measure of your usefulness through your ability to provide solutions a measure of your usefulness within the context of a civilization a measure of your usefulness through your ability to solve problems and to provide supernatural solutions or solutions generally solutions please pay attention we're praying are we together please look up the bible says see thou a man diligent in his business 
it leaves you with an assurance that you will stand before kings and you will not stand before mean men i call it the law of competence it's not enough to just be valuable you have to be exceptionally valuable and your value has to be needed and useful within the context of a civilization listen the kingdom works based on a reward system you have to understand this how do you know you are valuable by who is willing to pursue you how do you know you are valuable by the inconvenience that people can make to have access to you when people begin to complain and give excuses is because you are not valuable enough people press the crowd to meet jesus in the presence of value pain is no longer a factor when you find people who are exceptionally valuable look the efforts now i'm not promoting herbalists but just for instance from a value standpoint look how people leave their dignity and they will go to the bush to see a herbalist turn backwards and they turn quietly because you are looking for some favor can i tell you this if people have an excuse as far as convenience is concerned to meet you is because you are not valuable enough you must make up your mind as men and women of God please listen to me ministers and co-laborers in the gospel just because we're in ministry does not mean we are not valuable your value may be supernatural in context but you have to understand you can defend the reason why God blesses you through men away with that idea that especially when a man of god prospers people now begin to it's not everybody who is manipulating and and demonstrating lack of integrity the moment there is dispensing of a value whether it is sold or given free the law demands the law of god demands that that individual be rewarded are we together everybody say value second to the bible i have been marvelously blessed by men and women that god has raised and honored to carry the baton especially within the personal development industry especially those who have whose whose perspectives are consistent with scripture they have helped to mold my understanding as far as value is concerned listen to me let me give you a big key focus on developing yourself more than your business plan it's good to give value but it's best to be the value yourself when you develop yourself i have taught us here that success is not what you pursue if you find yourself pursuing success you are, you've already missed it you attract success by who you become more than what you do your becoming is greater than your doing this is where most people miss it we think that we become successful because of the things we do your doing is only useful when you have become your evolution is more important than your doing the most important thing about success is not what you obtain but that version of you that has to be attained to have that result there is a better cultured version a more disciplined version a more spiritual version a more cautious version that is the version it takes to obtain the result you are looking for your growth is greater than your doing are we learning make up your mind to be valuable what does it mean to be valuable to have the capacity to provide solutions listen to me you, your solutions have to be needed and useful don't say i like what i'm doing you are not the one who will pay yourself your solutions have to be needed and useful within the context of a civilization i'll not say much there because of time value train yourself I made up my mind as a covenant commitment as a man of God that in every area the Lord would have me serve his purposes in ministry leadership every other area I will develop myself 
to the core, not from a competitive standpoint. I want to be so effective. I learned this from Dr. Miles Munro. As a man of God, he had the largest church in Bahamas. He was an advisor to close to 16 presidents or thereabout. I hope I got the statistics right. Out of his books, about 40 or 46 of them were bestsellers. No manipulation. Just the, the superior content of his understanding. He had relevance across ministry, the political space, economy. And yet he was a disciplined and well-cultured man. What a mentor indeed. Are we learning? You must be valuable. Capacity. Capacity. Burn the candles in the night and do not pity yourself while you do that. Beware of arrival mentality. Mediocrity is what is destroying people in Africa, destroying people in this nation, destroying people in ministry, in business, in politics. How do you know that your value has gotten to its prime when your audience are only kings? When you find out that you are in the palace, then you can truly say you have tried. If you have not served kings, you are not there yet. When your audience, when your recipients are the kings, the, the kings of an industry, then you know you are valuable. I'm just pointing it out. We're not doing it, teaching on, on, on value necessarily. Again, let me encourage you. Do not stop until you serve kings. It is only kings that can reward you in a way that befits your sacrifice. Every other reward is just a supportive a, a support system until you get to the palace. How much did Joseph get for interpreting the dream of the wine of the baker? How much did Joseph get for interpreting the dream of the of the he got the leverage that took him to the palace, but he solved the king's problem once. You know what he got? Read your Bible, read what David got for killing Goliath. We worship God, we worship Jesus today because he's king of kings and lord of lords. But we also worship him because he's done something that no God and no man can do. Nobody has the power to forgive sins and translate you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. The value, the all-surpassing value that he has, defeating death, hell, and the grave, the hymn writer says, up from the grave he arose. Every other God, every other leader died and did not come back to life. But Jesus, he rose again victorious. Today he sits at the right hand of the Father. Number three, are we learning? What is the third key that activates favor? Relationships. Relationships relationships Amos chapter 3 and verse 3 let's hurry up please is God speaking to us tonight the third key that activates this grace called favor is called relationships can two walk together except they be agreed the word agreed there means compatible your degree of agreeableness can two walk together two companies two individuals a couple can two walk together except they be agreed listen the command be fruitful also means be relational because everything becomes fruitful on the basis of relationship is that true the relationship between a husband and his wife is how children come a relationship between you and the Holy Spirit is how the anointing comes. The relationship between you and the Word is how understanding comes. Everything multiplies on the basis of relationships. If you do not understand relationships, you will spend your lifetime paying for it. What are relationships? I've talked a bit on this. Advantageous connections. Relationships are advantageous connections. For instance... When an armed robber comes to you and points a gun, he's close to you, but you are not in a relationship because it's not an advantageous connection. He came to steal, he came to kill, he came to destroy. 
Relationships are advantageous connections. And listen, there is an intelligence that has to do with managing relationships. Many Christians do not understand the power of relationships. This is where, respectfully speaking, unbelievers have seemed to have an edge over believers. You may have heard me say it in my teachings. Please look at me. What will make a man fly a private jet from one nation and go to another nation to celebrate the two-year-old birthday of a billionaire's child? Is the child the man's friend? What is he doing in that house? Such a busy man will leave everything and come and invest his time. You see him play, someone that does not like children by default, everybody knows he doesn't like children. Now all of a sudden, because you see adaptation is proof of honor. You have to be able to adapt and he's playing and the man looks at him and says, look, I'm looking for a team of five people that I'll commit to be regional directors of my company and now that you have come, I trust you. Relationships. It is dangerous for you to not have strategic relationships. Let me give you an advice. Obtain grace from God to build relationships. Um, I, have a, I have a teaching on that. I've not taught it in Abuja, but there is a very powerful teaching that, that I, will, I will talk a bit on relationships. The moment God lifts you, the first thing to do with your lifting is to use it as a leverage to build relationships. Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting, use it quickly. Because according to the law of times and seasons, it will not always be like that. So the moment God gives you a window of opportunity, trap your lifting with relationships. Your relationships will keep you afloat. Are we learning? Yes, sir. Relationships. Relationships. The primary relationship being your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, your relationship with the Holy Spirit, your relationship with the Word of God, but your relationship with strategic helpers. We live today in evil times. And I'm praying for you. May you have relationships with the police. May you have relationships with the judicial system. May you have relationships with economically empowered people. May you also have relationship with those you call non-entities. Because the day of their relevance, according to the law of time and chance, is coming. Listen, do not only have relationship with people who have risen. You've seen their future already. Those who are rising are more powerful than those who have risen. The Bible says it doth not yet appear what we shall be like. Can I tell you this? If you were not there for people at their state of infancy, don't expect to be invited at the table of greatness when they arrive there. They only remember who helped them rise. Relationships. Strategic connections. Don't look for wealthy and blessed people alone. Many of us, our relationship is just for wealthy. It's, it's, a, it's already clearly, it suggests that it's a parasitic relationship. Some of us see some of these are young ones, these small children come, you push them around. I want to see Joshua Selman. And you've pushed the next prophet without knowing. This is why it's good to show honor to all men. Those above you, your contemporaries, and those supposedly below you. Relationships. Hallelujah. Please look up. Let me challenge you. Is there someone in your life today that you can actually pick the call and call him or her and say, please, I am in need of a financial situation. Help me. Not borrow me. Help me. And the person will say, I love you too much. Our relationship is so strong. I have a commitment to you. If you don't have such a person in your life, you are in trouble. Listen. Is there someone in your life today you can call and with one dial, no matter how busy he can pick. Apostle, people don't like me. No. If the problem is everybody, the problem is you. Mm. 
Nobody will just invest time like that. Relationship is an investment. Don't expect returns if you did not invest. Don't give people two minutes of your time with 10 years worth of trouble and expect them to remain with you. No, sir. When people do not perceive you to be an advantage to their lives and their destinies, they will love you, but they will put you in a group quietly and leave you there. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. Listen. Don't allow circumstances choose your relationships. Allow the Holy Spirit in partnership with your mind and your wisdom to choose your relationships. Many of us have not, have not been intentional about choosing relationships. Godly people, visionary people, people of excellence, people who love you sincerely in life and in death. I know a man, true story, his house got burnt. And before he arrived there, the friend had gotten a place and moved the children and a few things they could recover there. Relationships. Is there someone in your life today that you can call by 2, 3 a.m. and say there is an attack? My wife is having an attack. My children are having an attack. I'm not in Nigeria. And the person can say in 10 minutes I'm in your house. Listen, I'm, I'm giving you a wisdom key. If no matter how blessed you are, a day will come. You will see that you cannot solve every problem by yourself. And woe betides the man who is alone in the presence of challenges. Even Jesus, your Jesus, when he was on his way to Golgotha, he got to a point where he was weak, he had lost blood. The Bible says he fell there with the cross. There needed to be a man who volunteered. And said I will hold the cross for him I've taught you the ministry of destiny help us and I've taught you these four categories of people you need in your life let me do a one minute recap in case you were not here or you've forgotten number one that when it has to do with relationships destiny help us you need divine connectors they can help you but they know who can help you and they can connect you to that person. Number two, you need men of influence. They are willing to invest their credibility and their track record to help you rise. Number three, you need gifted people, the men and women who produce results. Sometimes you need more than kindness, you need results. And then number four, burden bearers. The assignment of a burden bearer is not to move you forward. They are the ones who stop you from going backward. If you do not have these four categories of people in your life, you are in trouble. If you have to pay for everything by yourself, you are in trouble, even if you are blessed. A day will come, money cannot buy anything. You will need the hearts of men. Somebody must believe in you enough to stake their lives. You cannot be a general friend to everybody. Somebody must see you and keep you in the holy of holies of their hearts. And say let me not share that this woman has an headache or a headache not when i'm alive can anybody make that kind of statement and say look no matter what it is you can count on me respectfully speaking there are many ceos politicians even preachers who spend their life serving people and serving the needs of people but they did not build relationships and in old age you see many angry and lonely people Sometimes when I see elderly people lonely, I ask questions. Did they ever have children? They worked in the secular job for 30 years and 35 years. We were concerned about promotion, not relationships. Now you retire and every relationship goes. If people respect you just because of title, you are in trouble. They must love you beyond titles and be knitted like David and Jonathan. 
a good place to pray before we finish up can you again lay your hands on your head and say father connect me to strategic relationships even in this season first oh god make me one who is worth being friends with life will be hard you're a man of god listen to me no matter the call of god upon your life you will depend on strategic relationships to rise go ahead are you praying please pray please pray you came to church you need a friend that sticks closer than a brother you need men that can stand for you and say under my watch your children will never beg for bread not when i'm alive how big he worshiping all of the days of my life i'll be here worshiping all of the days of my life i'll be here helping you all of the days of my life i'll be here helping you all of the days of my life i'll be here holding you all of the days of my life i'll be here holding you all of the days of my life listen if you have friends who love your money alone love your anointing alone love your ministry alone MOG, if you leave ministry today, the people who love you, will they still love you? CEO, if you leave your job today, can they, have you not seen politicians who lost elections and in a moment, everybody who is saying yes sir, just left them. Who is the next person? Our world is full of selfishness. Let me give you an advice. When you find people who love you for who you are, Pay the price and keep them. Swallow your pride and keep them. Not everybody has that time to love you for who you are. This is wisdom. And when God lifts you, please obtain grace to see the people who love you sincerely. The great are largely surrounded by psychophants for obvious reasons. You must obtain grace. That house help may not have money to give you, but I assure you they will stand by you forever. Some of you love everybody except your children. And yet when you are sick, they are the ones who stand close to you. Can I tell you the truth? Do not forget that there are people who love you for who you are, not what you have. Money can be deceptive. Anointing can be deceptive. Titles can be deceptive. This is why many people are heartbroken and shattered into pieces today. Because they think they are popular. They think they have crowds. Oh, I have a great, I'm a great politician. I'm a great man of God. I have thousands and millions of people. Can they be there standing for you? Can they cry with you and say, we are here crying? Can I tell you? A true friend is not one who stands with you. A true friend is one who dies with you. If you have a friend you can only live for, you are wasting your time. The real proof of friendship is not life, it's death. I'm preaching now, I'm only doing what God has asked me to do. Two more, we have a few minutes. Number one, honor. You see that favor is merited, do you agree with me now? When you learn this and someone says you are just lucky, just pray the prayer of mercy for the person. Oh, why are you favored like this? Why does everybody love you? I think you are just lucky. Oh dear. Don't be angry. Just give them this message. Number one, honor. 
Number two, value. Number three, relationships. Number four, the fourth way that you activate this grace called favor is through prayer. You can provoke favor through prayer. Favor is one of those systems of advantage that can be activated in prayer. Ask Jabez, oh that thou wouldest bless me, enlarge my coast, let your hand be upon me. Mm. You can pray favor. I prayed for favor for one full month. It was a February. From first to the last month, favor. Lord, the heart of man is selfish, but by your grace, you are able to place something upon the heart of kings and nobles that can cause them to be attentive to your need. When God says amen to your prayer, it is truly amen. God will raise a fish to bring out coin from his mouth. Does a fish eat coin? But when favor is on you, God can use Pharaoh to give you gold. Everything has riches in it. It only hides it. It's favor that allows them to give it. The Bible says, as for the earth, out of it comes bread. Please listen to me. There are many of you right now, the truth is that with the current price of land, physically speaking, you may never have the opportunity to build a house in your lifetime. But favor can build one for you and give you the key just like that. It's not a call to irresponsibility. It's a system of advantage. Are you learning? Please go back this week. Um, I'll give us an assignment by the Spirit when we're wrapping up. Use this week among the many prayers you will pray. Pray favor-provoking prayer. Lord, show me favor. I didn't come from a family with any advantage by default. If you do not help me, I don't have an uncle or an auntie somewhere. But I look to Yahweh, Yahweh. My hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. I look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. One more time. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh. Yahweh. Listen. Remember that men are not your source. They are only channels. The real source. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. The hymn writer says. It comes from God. It only comes through men. When you exalt men above God, you are in trouble. Can I tell you this? Truly, God can give favor to men. God can pick you like this. And say, where is he? I, I'm, I'm, I'm in Abuja here. And God can pick you and give an instruction and tell men to honor you. And in one week, God can use men to change your life in a way that you'll be afraid of your own testimony. Believe this. Oh, favor. favor provoking prayer there is a way you can hold on to the four horns of the altar except you are not tired of your situation if you keep giving flimsy excuses you may sit down there as a preacher as a businessman you are not just an entrepreneur you can go back my father and my god i bow my knees to our father and begin to pray favor oh god i call for favor and whilst you are praying God will wake someone and say the one billion that you have kept for charity to help people there is one of my sons and my daughters that requires help from there that person is the only breadwinner out of 12 people if you do not arise 
Listen. How did the salvation of the Gentiles come? Read your Bible, Acts chapter 10. Cornelius was praying. Cornelius was sowing seeds. And God himself told Peter, get up. Don't call what I've called clean unclean. There is a call. Carry your presence straight to the house of Cornelius. That was where the salvation of the Gentiles started. Listen to me. Please hear me. Minimize knocking on the offices of men and ask God to do the knocking for you. Those men will not listen to you. They are too busy living out their destinies. Don't go around getting angry and saying, this person, you have what it takes to help me. When God knocks, see, there is a name he's called. He's called the father of spirits. He can wake any spirit in the middle of the night. Have you considered this family? And he says, do something for them. And someone just shows up in your life and says, by divine instruction, I don't like you, but by divine instruction, he said, every month for the next two years, I should give you this. And you are wondering, it's a lie. You may think these are some crooks trying to play games with you. Can I tell you this? The Bible says, what things soever ye desire, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest it, and thou shalt have it. How could I lead a ministry like this without the favor of God? This is the, there are many of you having high blood pressure today. I'm, I'm not trying to insult you. Forgive me. But it's true. If God does not show you favor, life is hard. Unbearably hard. Where will the finances come from? Even if you have money, where will the access come from? Do you know what it means for gatekeepers to open their hearts over you? It has to be God. In one minute, I like you to pray, Father, may, may favor come upon my life. May favor come upon my life. Difficult things become easy when the grace called favor is upon you. Ratessa de Balandas cut the brecate paracoshka de brendega de Balahasia. Ye have not because ye ask not. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now listen, listen, please listen. The last key, I will give it to you so that we'll pray. We're out of time. The last key to favor is found in Esther chapter 2 and verse 15. I call it the Esther anointing. There is the grace for favor can be imparted. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, Yahweh. Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh Esther chapter 2 and verse 15 something is coming on someone right now hmm. Pay attention Now when the turn of Esther the daughter of Abihel the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, listen carefully, was come in unto the king. She required nothing but what Haggai, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women appointed. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of how many? All them that looked upon her. Next verse. 16. The Bible says, so Esther was taken to King Ahasuerus in his royal house in the 10th month which is the month Tebeth in the 7th year of his reign 
And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. When you read the verses before 15, the Bible says there were many women, and yet Esther went to this strange man called Haggai. He had worked with the king a long time. He knows what the king is looking for. And she asked him, what does the king really want? And Haggai said, there is an oil I will give you. Just keep rubbing on your body for one year. That's all. Forget all this how to walk. The Holy Spirit can search the heart of your destiny helper. He knows what he wants. Hear me, my brothers and my sisters. Truly, there is an anointing for favor. There is a grace called favor. The assignment of that grace is to insist on the heart of men. The proof of favor is not money. The proof of favor is the loyalty of the hearts of men towards you and towards your assignment. Access to systems and structures. This is the grace that has been so difficult to come upon many believers. Because of dishonor, because of lack of value, because of disobedience to the principles of relationship, because they do not ask, and finally because they have not cared for such a grace. Some have received the grace for prayer. Some have received the grace for signs and wonders. Some have received all kinds of graces. But the grace and the impartation for favor. We have a few minutes. We are going to spend the next three to four minutes. No prayer point. I'm going to leave you with the God of your salvation. Everyone, you are going to cry and say, Father, I can't remain the same. Not after this meeting. Those following online from any nation, please pray. You came to the house of God. This is service to change your life. Think of your children while you pray. Think of your children's children while you pray. Think of the work God has given you while you pray. Go ahead and pray. Pray. You're on your way to better days. Pray. Something is changing. You're on your way to better days. You're on your way to better days. Never weak again. Ah, you're on your way to paradise. It's God's prophecy for your life. You're on your way to paradise. Status is changing. There's no more decline. You're on your way to paradise. Status is changing. No more decline. You're on your way to better days. You're on your way. On your way. On your way to better days. You're on your way. On your way. Go ahead and declare. I tap into this system of advantage. I fit all my background. I fit all my limitations. By the power of the Holy Ghost. I tap into this grace called favor. This grace called favor. This grace called favor. Called favor. Called favor. favor with God. Favor with men, favor with God, favor with men, 
favor with systems favor with structures favor with gatekeepers Pray. Pray. Hallelujah. Listen, I just feel stirred in my heart to give us one prayer point. Every spirit sponsoring any closed door because of my carelessness in complying with these principles. First, I obtain mercy, and then number two, I scatter that door. It must open for me. Every spirit that closes the door leading to the next level of my Christian experience, I obtain mercy. Mercy for dishonor. Mercy for being mediocre. Mercy for not understanding relationships. Mercy for not being prayerful and mercy for rejecting this invitation but then i command every devil lift your hands it's time for the door of my destiny to be open hallelujah hallelujah please look at me listen the law of impartation demands that number one you must believe in god who is the source of all things number two you must believe in the vessel that he's using remember when there was a problem with oil the instruction was go to them that sell and buy it now you know how you buy it buy it with honor Buy it with value. Buy it with relationships. I just gave you currencies. Buy it with honor. Buy it with value. Buy it with relationships. Buy it through prayer. Go to them that sell and buy. Are doors closing over your destiny? Then you need favor. Go to them that sell and buy is your business crashing your financial life crashing affecting your spiritual life you used to have time for god time for prayer time for worship to give to the house of god right now you who was on fire you've gone down spiritually because of looking for tea and bread go to them that sell and buy Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Amen. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. For thine is the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 Your lifting and your rising. Amen. Amen. To the change of season. Amen. Amen. You don't have to kneel, but I want to pray for you. He says, Such as I have, give I unto you. Listen. I don't stand by any human sense of bragging to claim there is nothing we have that has not been given by God but I will be lying 
and God will judge me if I tell you by the privilege of God's grace we have not obtained this grace also it's been difficult for believers listen every time God sends a grace and a word to Jacob it is because of Israel there are things you cannot do in your life until this mantle is upon you there are doors you can't do end time ministry without the favor of God you will compromise beyond your imagination the key to integrity is not only character it is favor access to the hearts of men many of you will marvel at the things that happen to you I'm telling you that a door that for 10 years have refused to open you carry this Esther anointing if Esther as a village girl with one encounter with this oil oh it changed my life I'm indebted to God forever some of you are crying think of your children right now you're about to receive an impartation think of mama at home 10 years from now add 10 years to your age 20 years from now add 20 years to your age no achievement no nothing i don't want you to feel bad but it's time to get serious there is a system of advantage you have not tapped into few minutes and we're done those following online following from whatever nation god is giving you another opportunity again azaria family yes sir yes sir yes sir i know it works brothers and sisters i know i know there is this grace mama you may be old in age but this grace still works apostle i didn't have the opportunity to go to school find comfort favor works apostle i'm tired people keep disappointing me politically in business find comfort i come from a village it's difficult to even see the map find comfort favor is not a license for laziness that's why I told you it's not just unmerited access. It is divine help. God and men in partnership holding your hands to lift you. Please pray one more minute. You're about to receive this impartation. Lord, you took my pain away and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice and sing. Yeah. Yeah. You've taken the pain and the sorrow away You've given me peace undeniable There's no need to cry cause you're always with me You're my father, my everything yeah. now in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God I stand by this apostolic and prophetic office by the privilege of the election of grace and I stretch my hands first over you here in Abuja our family in Zaria those following from around the globe from america to europe to asia the caribbeans as many as are following and will follow in the name of jesus the one who has shown us mercy i decree and declare right now 
receive ye this grace called favor receive ye this grace called favor i i place this mantle upon your life take this grace now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the morning experience favor in the afternoon experience favor in the night experience favor in nigeria experience favor in america experience favor in europe experience favor every door that needs favor for to be open i declare may favor open that door now hear me every strategic relationship you have lost through carelessness and lack of discernment i call on my god who is also your god let there be a supernatural reconnection now every door that dishonor has shut that was once open and dishonor shut it by the mercy of the god of david we reopen that door now and in the name of jesus many of you are gifted but the favor to announce you is not there you are so gifted gifted to a point that is institutions that should be patronizing your gift in the name of jesus by the in the name of jesus christ i give your gift visibility now by this gift let those who have the capacity to both discern and reward you may they find you in the name of jesus hear me in this new season of your life every relationship you need to connect with some of you may not know them international relationships ministerial relationships i declare may that connection happen for you now everyone anointed commissioned and ordained to find you and hold your hand in this season wherever they are i stand by the prophetic i call them into your life now <laughs> hear me i stand under the corporate grace of the fathers of faith who have transferred these graces to us and under this corporate anointing i declare in the name of jesus as a contribution of this supply to the body of christ find the grace for favor <laughs> by this grace shame reproach hear ye the word of the lord let god's people go now hear me by this grace upon you whoever has forgotten you no matter how long in the name of jesus by favor may the book of remembrance be opened over you now even pharaoh who hated israel with passion was the one who ended up giving them gold and everything they used to build the tabernacle in the wilderness can i tell you this when favor comes upon you it's not only friends that bless you anybody directed by god i pray for you whoever must bring forth their credibility their time their resources their endorsement to shift you to the next level i call them forth by prophecy now now i'm praying for the body of christ but now let me pray for the koinonia global family 
you belong to a family that is mysteriously favored of God I pray for you in the name of Jesus out of the abundance by reason of this prophetic connection step into superior realms of favor for and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for